Hunter X Hunter episode 39. Oh, yeah, please give me more of this. Gone. Oh, and uh. Damn, what was his name? I already forgot. Wing. I know that creepy silhouette anywhere. Yeah, there's Kluo and Hisoka. It's like for a Pika. Oh, is that Lirio? This is kind of spoiler territory. Maybe that's for Pika. And also, Manipulator. Kluo's brother. Can't wait to, for the specialist category. I'm sure that's where a lot of the magic will happen. Right. Yeah, there's really, really unlimited potential here. Even the specialist category alone. The author really leaving a lot of room for, for fun creativity with that other category. Not limiting himself to A through what? E, F? Alright, that's a promise. Wish X and X promise. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Long time no see. Wow, he looks different. Oh, Nana's changed Kurapika. The exam is never truly ended. It's like just as Nana's life, the exam is also life. <laughs> Speaking of being attuned with your higher destiny, this guy has found a destiny beyond clothing. He's got that Ryu vibe. Imagine living your whole life and, and like then discovering that Nen was real. I wish. But maybe there, maybe that's true, metaphorically. Not combat abilities, but higher sense, higher vision. Awakeness, for lack of a better word. There are a couple of realizations I've had that I, I would put into like a unique category. One is that nobody was coming for me. Nobody was coming to save me. And relatedly, no destiny was coming to find me. Like the big adventure I always dreamed wasn't going to appear at my doorstep, like in the movies. Another was the realization that the status quo has its has its wisdom but is extremely limited and is really there as more of a safeguard and a default not an ultimate and how that applies to just so many things that seem obvious and dogmatic and then what an endless process that is because by being your own locus of thought you have to be okay and ready and willing and humble enough to recognize that you're probably going to go backwards first get it wrong a lot of the time but you have to keep updating and refining third and relatedly you're responsible for everything that comes from you actions thoughts etc that there is no blame for anything i would say that happens after a certain minimum level of consciousness and self-awareness connected to this idea is there's no binary category between child adult novice and expert it's a gradient adults are big children and experts are well cynically just people with credentials but more optimistically the uninformed who are on the process of becoming more informed there's really not as big of a distinction as i initially thought also what i'll call now the zushi idea that you can maximize your edges by knowing who you really are what you truly need what you can dispense with and what you can't and aligning your life accordingly even if it's unorthodox another is that while thoughts and emotions are not choices usually what you do with them certainly is and there is a way to really refine the process of thinking and feeling so that you break the causality of what you think and feel and what you are there's a lot i mean it's all self-improvement stuff actually i have a feeling that there will be real direct corollaries to each of the different hatsu applications <laughs> Still bothers me that he threw that down in the rain. Still wondering if it's laminated. Here we go. Kuripika episode. Long overdue. Does he carry this in his satchel? Turns out that's all he carries in his satchel. Kuripika just started with the water divination, it seems. Or maybe we jumped ahead. That's really interesting that she said that. He said that. Damn it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That Never tell me the odds. Zero percent specialist. Yikes. Someone's gonna have broken the odds. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Maybe that's what Jing is working on. All mastery. Wow, it's zero in name, even though it's adjacent. Well, Kurpika definitely had unique circumstances. I wonder where the eye, eye glowing technique thing comes into play with Nen. Surely that's got to be some kind of Nen, right? Or is it outside of Nen? Which doesn't mean he shouldn't, but it's a choice with costs. Maybe big costs. 
強化系を頂点まで極めた能力者との戦闘で通用するのかうん一言で言うと難しいな I like how he brought a wine glass but not a pencil Honestly I, I love the dilemma I love the way they, they've set this up There's so much to be said about it I mean you would think that having your skill or knowing your type would be a huge edge and I guess the knowledge itself is an edge but to me it doesn't fully solidify the choice in the way you might expect like okay I'm an enhancer so I gotta master the enhancer stat or trait In real life I think there are times when you recognize an aptitude but you would rather pursue the 80% or 60% than the 100% and that's fine I guess the more you understand that's the case the more that's a conscious choice and not an accident or a mistake the more It makes sense. Also related to Zushi, the goal I think is, it's hard to pin down, but it's something like a feeling of alignment and it's not easy to tap into, but I, I know the feeling. What you're doing is exactly the right thing you need to do for your fulfillment at that period in your life at that moment. Nothing is wasted. In those moments you feel alive, you feel connected, you feel awake, you feel thinking. You get a boost to mood and physical stamina and everything. You either need less sleep or just sleep deeper when you do sleep. You need less food. And what I've learned from those experiences is it's not necessarily being at a master or best level of that thing or even better than anyone else. The comparison is really irrelevant or being a natural at that thing. It feels like more the right one at the right moment for what you most need to work on and ways you most need to grow and things you most need to experience. Like maybe it's a minimum level of success you've never experienced. Maybe it's feeling real ownership or joy in your work or your endeavor. When it comes specifically to like a career, I feel like the, the reality of it is very different from what we see and what we anticipate because what we see in specialization is the people at the very top, you know, the tiny, tiny minority, the 0.001% who are at the peak. And then we see a lot of people who say, I, they want to do it, but they really haven't done anything. They haven't reached any level of success during that zero category. There's actually a very, very large section of people who are doing something to their level of satisfaction in a field where they're engaged creatively, they're earning financially, but they're unseen or unknown to the general population because they're in sort of that middle tier. Like take music, for example. There are certain names everyone knows. There are still a lot of people making careers in music and loving it that you may have never heard of. There's a large unseen window there. Same goes for social media, obviously. That's maybe the biggest middle section, art, what have you. Ultimately, aptitude is a really, really important metric and it's something that should be understood, but it's not the only metric. Goals are a big part of it as well. The only thing that maybe makes the equation a little bit different for the characters is that their goal, their world is sort of very specific to this high level fighting thing. They may not have the luxury of ignoring their best category, right? But there are still choices to be made. Another element to it is that you may you may be able to brute force it to get a weak skill to a strong skill. Oh, really deflating this ability. But they're more portable? Yeah. Well, yet any tool for any task, like, uh, God, what's her name in My Hero Academia? Momo, who conjures nan items from her boobs. Half a year, it took going half a day. Everyone is converging in New York. I mean, York New. Recruiters, am I right? Okay, one of these things is not like the other. Wow. Groupie can enforce her. Very apt. <laughs> wow, that's that's hard hitting. That'll come back. Never tell me the odds. Those are the chains. That dude casually with one line hitting hitting him with the entire interpretation of that old vengeance thing. Speaking of Attack on Titan, your obsession with your own mission, soothing your emotional baggage, or even obsession with freedom itself is the trap, or is the emotional baggage itself disguising itself as higher purpose. Uh, so much for confidentiality. Also, Kripika literally chaining himself already. 
んなチンケの野郎と飯食ってもまずいだけだろデートの相手なら俺たちがしてやるよ最高の夜をプレゼントするぜ Does anyone really do this or think this works? I may be no dating expert but one thing I know for sure works every time If you see a girl you like just make yourself As hunched as possible and lurk over to her with your gang of goons and say you're willing to show her a good time. <laughs> Works 100% of the time, every time. To really seal the deal, when she turns you down, get hostile, accuse her of being cold and off putting. Because what? <laughs> hey, smooth. Oh, yeah, the tongue lick. I forgot about that. There we go. Here's where they get angry stage. Oh, at least you got a kiss out of it. Oh, there's that sound effect. Specialist. I don't want to know what kind of dark backstory is behind that one. She cast Charm. I don't know, I think you got a pretty good deal. I've seen a lot of anime thugs get much worse fates for bad catcalling. Here come the new challengers, and they feel like more than NPCs. Oh, please shoot him now. Shoot him! <laughs> Yes! No. Oh. Thank you. At least he's self aware. And then he jumped into the moon! <laughs> oh, he's a dog lover. Good guy confirmed. Rapika officially the first one to actually use the hunter license. The mustache is growing out of his upper and lower lip. It's hypnotizing. Oh. Oh, we're all here. That's the dark destiny for Kurapika, ending up in his own gang. <laughs> what do we get it for? Man, the job search be like. Oh, so it's an unpaid internship. Job search be like. The chains, though, look terrible. Wow. <laughs> These ingredients, though. Oh, no. Going along with this it, it immediately is against the goal. Keep your bangs low, okay? This this is really developing rapidly. The employer just became a target. Creepy, no! No, 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 no! Ooh, this is... Yeah, they're really developing quickly. Creepy could become an evil or working with the evil. <laughs> this guy... <laughs> Kurapika cool, needs to work a little bit on that uh, Nan masking. At one point, I was thinking Kurapika would be the adult for Gonin Kalua. Kurapika needs an adult or a friend. The isolation has not been good for him. All the symbolism happening so quickly, like the guy telling Kurapika that his quest for vengeance would be his chains. Now he's literally wearing chains on himself. That also seems to be the whole working with this employer thing. Yeah, okay, we're doing terrible things to get in with the employer so we can enact justice, but we're doing terrible things. One of the people in this room is going to kill one of his people for the eyes. You can't let that pass. I mean, I guess that's his argument, right? His argument is do this work to get in with this guy so that we can kill him and stop this. But in the meantime, you're working for this dude, doing fetch quests for him. That's what I call a sticky situation. And then the ultimate goal, the culmination is just Murder. Murder everyone. Sure. Okay. This seems unnecessary, but alright. A new dark battlefield. For real. Not hard to see the emotional peril that Gurupika is facing. Someone needs to have a solo episode with Zuko. Not that Zuko was really that helpful. Someone needs to go on a solo trip with Zuko after hearing some choice words from Aang. Hunter Cyclopedia! Okay, yeah, I don't really know much about him. Not able to earn Kurupika's respect, yeah. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> That's random. Yeah, speaking of evil, taking away the only thing that Luki has, his wife who's... Maybe it's both Gon and Kurapika that are being pulled into what they don't fully realize are dark forces, dark energies. I mean, yeah, it's it's a journey. It's a destiny. There's a way it can go right. Like, for all my talk against revenge, it is a path. Speaking of being in the zone and right place, right time, and that physical, emotional boost and all that. One of the weird things about it is you can't get that from doing terrible things. I'm not 100% sure how to reconcile that. But I think to do that right, thinking about narrative arcs and how they apply to real life, you have to do that to prove the, the essential thing you need to prove to yourself, but then also be able to rise above it and walk away from it. There is something powerful about like having a monster inside of you and knowing you have that monster inside of you, but it goes really wrong and becomes a tragedy when that monster controls you and consumes you and it ends up controlling you rather than you using it to get the things you want to get and to affect the outcomes you, you want to affect. There is a way where a revenge story ends up feeling satisfying. It's the character summoning the energy and power and resources and strength to confront the evil head on and defeating the evil, but not becoming that evil. There's a way Kurapika could get revenge on the spider troop that would be great you know, putting an end to them, stopping them. And there's a way it can go wrong. Like I'm already summoning images of Kuripika becoming the leader of the spider gang. You know, it also isn't great is having that urge for revenge or whatever. Maybe it's just an urge to show someone to prove yourself against someone who doubted you, whatever it is, that that energy of having an adversary, even if it's just a spiritual adversary, feeling that anger and rage and pull and wanting to prove them wrong or prove to yourself you have the power to do anything about it, develop the strength to confront that, being the kind of person that, that actually has influence over the things you don't like, but totally ignoring that and explaining it away to yourself as, well, it's not worth it, but not because you really feel that way. If you really feel that way, that's that's real, that's legitimate. But if it's just a way of protecting yourself from what you really feel is the truth or protecting yourself from having to grow and push yourself where you actually can affect things, you no longer have the, the weaknesses that you, you address are valid in the other person's actions or criticism or whatever, so that nothing happens at all except you're growing that bitterness inside of you because you know that there's something there, but you're not really ready to face it. Like with Gon and how pursuing his father is not the be all ultimate of his soul, it's about his soul, yet it contains the seeds of that adventure. The same can be true of Kurapika and more generally those feelings of I'll show you, we'll see who has the last lap, etc. It's all powerful energy. I think it just depends on how it's utilized, whether it becomes something freeing, working past an obstacle or challenge, leveling up, let's say, or it becomes Kurapika's chains, where you're stuck on something that's hindering your growth or worse, destroying you.